Objection 6. Who has gone to heaven and hell and come back to tell us about it? You may not know anyone personally who has gone to any of these places to come back and tell you. But just because you don't know anyone who has come back, this doesn't mean that the afterlife doesn't exist. Especially in a world where people are conformed to a mindset where anything outside of what they can't see doesn't exist and are taught to reject it. Many people who reject the reality of heaven and hell are people whose daily lives are taken up by the demands of the system, such as working long hours, doing the same repetitive things at work year after year, and who don't really set aside valuable time to think about what all of creation offers outside the confines of their limited daily routines. And yet, they draw conclusions about the entire creation from their limited and repetitive daily routines. Jesus made clear the reality of heaven and hell when he spoke of the rich man and Lazarus. The details given by Jesus in this story are real. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers, let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The rich man was being tormented in hell, and looking up he saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. It is made clear that a great chasm is fixed between the two places, so that no one can cross to the other side. It is interesting that this is the only parable out of all the other parables in which Jesus gives a specific name to the person in the story. Jesus called the man Lazarus because he was a real man and that was his name. In the story, the rich man begs for Lazarus to be sent to his relatives to warn them, so that they too do not come to this place of torment. But Abraham replies, They have Moses and the prophets to listen to. But the rich man is convinced that if someone from the dead would just rise and go and warn them, then they would repent. Abraham says, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, then they won't be convinced even if someone were to rise from the dead. Likewise today, Jesus has his servants and prophets who go and warn the world of the reality of heaven and hell. In addition to this, God in his infinite love and mercy also gives people revelations of both heaven and hell and takes them there to see what it is like so that they can testify to the world. And likewise today, if people don't listen to the servants and prophets of Jesus Christ, then they too wouldn't be convinced even if someone were to rise from the dead to tell them. The problem with some people is many times they expect the miraculous when all they are doing in the meantime is missing the simplicity of reality. This generation of people is more accountable than any other generation for the knowledge they have received.